He's got a varied background like so many of us. He worked with the Nike, Hawk, and Zeus guidance systems a long time ago, and then he got involved with artificial heart research. So he was the one who set up a lot of control systems that are currently used in cardiac surgery. After that, <coughs> he uh, uh, also uh, worked with um, the uh, new devices that he's going to show us now. Um, he's from Saratoga Springs, Utah, and let's welcome Joe Galloway. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I hope, hope someone here has one of those uh, trunk monkey booths. I'd like to get one of those. Those are pretty nice. Uh, as was mentioned, my background is varied, and we've been doing this for some 30 years now. Uh, what has been transpiring here in this group is kind of exciting. A lot of interest in frequency responses to the human body and how to identify different diseases, disease processes, and etc. Our device looks at the energetics of the body, and from those energetics, we can determine whether tissues are healthy or whether they're weakened. And from that, we can come up with several solutions that may be beneficial. In the past, the, uh, how many are familiar with electrodermal screening, for instance? I see a few. In the past, you've had to go to the acupuncture points to gather information. And there's been two major faults with that uh, approach. Number one is that uh, the technician ability, the technician's ability to gather that data correctly influences the readings and therefore influences the end result. And for nearly 30 years, we've looked for a method to circumvent the point finding in these kind of devices. How many of you are familiar with the silo? You don't know what I'm talking about at this point. One, okay. This silo is a little bit different than we generally present in. We're generally presenting to uh, upwards of 100 doctors, and so this is a little bit of a different uh, feel for us. It's been a to be here because of the open mindedness of the individuals that are here. You haven't been educated into the box, as I call it. You're still able to have open minds and look at alternatives and different solutions to different problems. And so that's been kind of uh, fun for us to uh, experience. The environment that we usually present in is very structured. And uh, I will present probably the way that we present in that structured environment. And I hope it won't be too detailed for you. But doctors are usually people of precision, and they're very good at following protocols. And so when you teach doctors or when you present to doctors, you have to start at A and build a platform once they understand that, you can move to B and build a platform and move on up the chain. So we'll do that here. But just to let you know, what the Asira does is we have two electrodes and you hold one in each hand. We send a small current through the body to measure the internal resistance or the capacity of reactance in our case. And that gives us an indication of tissues and organ systems and their functionality and where they are health-wise from an energetic perspective. Then we have a second phase of that device that sends out frequencies into the body and the response of organs and tissues to that frequency give us an indication of where weaknesses or strengths are. And uh, we'll get into a lot of that with Mark. Mark's been a practitioner in this area for 20 years now. And uh, we'll do a little demo for you here in a few minutes so that you can see that. What I'd like to do now is just basically take you through the electronics. Do we have any engineers, electronic engineers here? Two or three. Any doctors? Couple. Good. Okay. What we're going to do then is move through the theory of how this device works. 
And the reason for this is that there are a lot of look-alike devices in the marketplace today. They don't understand the technology. They've got on the bandwagon because this looks like a good thing to do. We've been doing this since 1976, and we're pretty familiar with all of the systems. In fact, a good share of the systems that are in the marketplace have been designed by us directly or indirectly. Some have taken our software right down to the misspelled words. So we're familiar with a lot of the systems. The thing that they lack is the understanding of how the signals are propagated, how they are sent to the body, and what the timing relationship is going in and coming out. Just to give you a quick overview of that, if you all started asking me questions at the same time, I could hear the questions, but I couldn't respond. And I think you've all had that experience where three or four people are asking you something. The body is the same way. When you send out a signal to challenge the body's tissues, you have to give it a certain period of time for response. All of these little nuances go into a system that works accurately. Our particular system, we just completed a one-year study at the University of Utah, 500 women, and we had a 99.5% correlation with the accuracy of the OSIRA and a blood test which is unheard of in our particular industry. It's very difficult to get a correlation between energetic medicine and the medicine that's mainstream because they look for disease. Energetics shifts prerequisite to disease. It also shifts prerequisite to healing. So we see it much sooner than they will see it. And so whenever we try to do any tests with them, they have to be set up in a specific way or we end up getting a lot of false positives. We can do, for instance, a sinus where you can x-ray, you can see the dark congestion and the correlation with our device. We can do a pulmonary function test because they can actually see the meter indication and we can show that there is a lung problem. So those are the kinds of tests that have to be done in the scientific arena, and we've already alluded to how scientific medicine is. They're 50 to 75 years behind the ball or behind the curve. So what we have and what we want to present to you today is a device that is going to look at the body systemically from a causal chain perspective and give you an indication of where the energetic shifts and weaknesses are then those energetic shifts and weaknesses can be correlated by whatever uh, practitioner type that you are to fit in with your practice. So this gives you a very specific window into a lot of maladies that are, quite frankly, misdiagnosed. And I don't like to use the term diagnostic because our equipment isn't diagnostic from the standpoint of a medical device. It looks at things, again, from the energetic perspective. So let's take a look here. We're going to go through some basic electronic theory. And the reason for this is to give you an understanding and try to educate everyone out in the marketplace of what real systems do. There are a lot of look-alike systems, like I've said, and they tend to taint the marketplace and give us a surreal image of uh, not being credible. And so whenever we do a presentation, we like to give the scientific background and show that it's based on firm science. So let's move through here. Understanding the OSIRA, in order to understand it, we're going to have to go through a few basic electronics theories. And we're going to have to talk about four specific components and how those components operate and then we'll tie those into how those electronic components are consistent with the body. Is this working? The left button? Mm -hmm. No, there it went. Okay, basically voltage is a part of every system. Everyone knows that. It's simply a difference of potential, a plus and a minus. You have to have that. In the old days, when I was in school, it was called electromotive force. 
which just, meant, uh, which just basically meant the ability to move electrons from one place to another. Everybody's familiar with the battery, you know, plus and minus. This is the force then that causes the electrons to move. Now this is going to be important for us because we're going to be talking just about electron movement so that you can see how the system works. Next, of course, is current. This is the electron flow, the actual movement of those electrons through a circuit. We call that current, the movement and flow of electrons. Then we have resistance, which is simply the resistance to the flow of those electrons. We want to be able to restrict them and control them. That's how we produce electronic circuits that do all of these marvelous things, computers and etc. The other thing that I want you to note here is that on this particular set, figure out how to use this, right here, you will notice that V is represented of voltage, I is current, and R is resistance. But you'll notice there are three other values out here. Those values come into play whenever a frequency is introduced into the circuit. And we'll talk about those in a little while because they become a very important part of how our system works. <laughs> there we go. Okay, these properties all operate with the laws of physics. There's no voodoo here. There's no, nothing going on that can't be proved by formula. Here's the basic formula of Ohm's law. Most of you have heard of Ohm's law. This is how we derive voltage, ohms, resistance, current, all of those formulas. There's nothing here that's uh, different. Four components that we want to talk about here are the resistance, which is what I'm getting from this thing. <laughs> Reminds me of the old days. <laughs> there we go. Resistors, capacitors, antennas, and batteries. Okay. Now, I noticed that some of you are in the same age bracket that I am, and you can remember the old rabbit ears that used to sit on the TV. You remember those? The body made a real good antenna, and sometimes if you wanted to watch a good program in the evening on TV, you actually had to stand up and hold the antenna and get in some configuration. You remember doing that? I see some laughs over here. So the body is a good antenna. It's always picking up things that are coming through, all kinds of frequencies. In England, they've done a number of studies with full-spectrum bulbs as opposed to uh, the fluorescent tubes and people under full, fluoresce or full spectrum bulbs have less health problems, they're more active, they're happier people, and they have less downtime, and they're more productive, which is an interesting thing. So frequency has a big impact on us. The body is an antenna, and we'll talk about that in just a minute along with these other particular uh, items here. First of all, let's look at the resistor. Its function is simply to resist or control the flow of electrons. If we have an abundance of electrons on one side of a circuit, we want to control the flow of those electrons to the other side. If you don't control it, you end up with what we call a short circuit, which is good for fire starting, if you know. Okay. So a resistor is very simple. Capacitor is much the same way. Capacitor has the ability to store electrons on one side, and it also will try to equalize by allowing electrons to move over to the other side if it has a circuit to do so. So in effect, it acts similar to a battery, okay? Antenna we've kind of talked about. It's an interesting thing. When you talk to a doctor, they don't get the frequency. And I say, well, the body is frequency specific. They don't get that. They're not taught that. But everything we see is a frequency. 
the different colors are different frequencies. Everything we hear is a frequency. <coughs> Most of what we sense, even though some of it's imperceivable, is frequency. And you go into a restaurant, you don't like to sit on the stool next to somebody. You'd like to have a stool between you and them and this guy and you. You ever done that? You notice that? That's human nature. When somebody walks right up and talks to you right in your face, we don't like that because they're inside our little emitting area. So frequency specific individuals is what we are and uh, antennas play a big part in what happens with us in life. Now we talk about battery here for a number of reasons. Number one, the OSIRA is battery operated for a very specific reason. Anytime you connect up to 110 volts, you have a myriad of hoops that you have to jump through in order for safety. Since this device is monitoring a human being, we've put in about six different safety features. The battery itself supplies the current, as you see, the electrons in the one end, the abundance of electrons in one end, and the absence in the other end. These batteries are made out of nickel metal hydride, which means they have no memory. You can charge them at any point, and they will still give you a full discharge of the battery. The other thing on batteries is that we have a thermal shutoff and we have an overcurrent shutoff. So if anything in the OSIRA happens to go wrong and starts to draw current, the battery is shut off immediately. Okay, now we're going to get into some of the deeper theory of how the OSIRA works and how we get these readings and why they're so consistently accurate. If you'll notice, we're looking here at simply a resistor and a capacitor. And this is a static circuit right now. Nothing's happening because theoretically we have this switch open. As soon as I close this switch, all of these electrons are going to move to this point. Since electrons are negative, we're going to look at this point here as being the starting point of a sinusoidal wave. So what happens is as these electrons move through this resistor and it controls their flow, we will get a few electrons moving through and the more electrons that move through, the more equalized the circuit will become and this sine wave drops to zero once we have an equal amount of electrons on both sides. What's important here is the timing. This resistor, the R, times the C, equals the time. So if we have a large amount of electrons here, it's gonna take a longer time to get through. This sine wave is going to be extended, so the frequency then is extended. Everybody make that connection? If either of these components are increased, the time will be increased, and so the frequency is increased. If either of them are decreased, the frequency is decreased. So we see an increase and a decrease by varying either of these components. Now this is important because this is the guts of the OSIRA. This is how it works. And obviously we're not looking at all of the features here, nor are we giving you all of the information about the OSIRA. We're giving you enough information, hopefully, that you'll see the connection with what we've done. Okay, so let's recap real quickly then. Resistance and capacitance will change, and that changes in that oscillating circuit will change the frequency, okay? It's important. Okay, we need now to make a transition from the electronic components. How do we get from electronic components to the human body and incorporate this same philosophy into the human body. At transition, we're going to need a special tool, a tool that we call an equivalent circuit, okay? Equivalent circuits emulate the properties or mimic the properties of electronic circuits and or components, but they are not typically recognized as either, okay? So the human body, when you look at the human body, you don't say, oh, there goes a electronic uh, component or an electronic circuit. We don't recognize that as such. 
But because of their ability to emulate the properties of electronics, their functions can be predicted by and described in electronic terms or in those same formulas. Now let's see how that works. A lot better than this. <laughs> okay. Research of Dr. Vohl. Does everybody know who Dr. Vohl is? Nobody. Very few. Okay. Dr. Vohl was a uh, German uh, doctor. He was a family doctor. So he had a very unique situation. He spent 50 years in one little hamlet in Germany. He spent that time with those people. A lot of them he brought into the world, and a lot of them he watched as they went out of the world. So he had a very unique situation in that the postmortems and everything that went on in their lives during his career, he was privy to. And so he understood most of their maladies, what their problems were, and etc. Dr. Vohl also was a radio ham operator from high school years and just loved electronics. And along the line somewhere, he picked up on the fact that the human body seemed to be a lot like electronics. There was a lot of energy there. What ran the nerves? How did the body function without this energy? And so he started researching, and he is the one that has come up with all of these what we call acupuncture points, the Chinese had already discovered, but he made a correlation between those acupuncture points and specific maladies in human beings based on the energetic patterns that he could see and knowing these people individually. Dr. William Tiller is a professor emeritus now at, uh, can't remember the college, having a uh, Stanford. <laughs> Stanford, yes, Stanford University. And uh, their research, uh, very, very specific. He was given a grant to try to make synthetic skin. One of the things that he did was measure the skin at all points across its surface. And he discovered that at some points on the skin surface, the resistance was almost 20 times greater or less than it was at the surrounding areas. And he also discovered that at those particular points, they indicated acupuncture points which rel that related to the uh, Chinese acupuncture. So he was able to show that there was a correlation between the acupuncture points the ancient Chinese knew and a difference of potential in resistance at those points as opposed to the skin surrounding them which is rather astounding. Okay, they, their research then both show that uh, there is a resistive component and a capacitive component related to the body, okay? Further research indicates that the body can and does respond to transmitted signals or frequencies and other modes of induced stimuli. We get it all day long. We just talked about the full spectrum vo vo uh, voltage, or full spectrum bulbs versus the uh, fluorescent tubes. That's just one indication. We are continually being bombarded by all kinds of frequencies. It's interesting to note right now that in the US, because we have 60 cycle, and that's in our homes, and the wiring in the walls were circulated around everything, and we live in that environment that some of the diseases that we have here are different than the diseases they have in Europe where they have 400 cycles. So they're now looking and saying, I wonder what kind of diseases are emulated by these different frequencies and what's the difference? So there's some research now starting to appear and how these frequencies affect the body adversely as well as good. Changes in tissue resistance. Let's look at a couple of things here because we want to see how this manifests in the body in order for us to make these readings. Healthy tissue has a specific resistive value. If the tissue is stressed, which is the term we use if we're not doctors, which is inflamed, it is less resistive. 
When you get a cut on your finger, and we've all had those, what happens? It gets red, okay, as it starts to heal. It also gets real hot. Have you noticed that? It's because the body is amassing atoms to that point to restore or to rebuild that tissue. And so what happens is because we have all of those electrons there at that tissue, we have an abundance of electrons, the conductivity then is greater, so the resistivity is less. If the tissue is weakened or degenerative, it's more resistive. Scar tissue has less conductivity than healthy flesh. Same with tissues inside the body. If those tissues are healthy and they're functioning and they're hydrated, then they work well and the resistance is low, okay? Let's look at how some other things will affect the body's readings. <laughs> I don't think this thing likes me. I don't know what that is. Uh, those are not. That's not the right. Uh, that's not where we need to be. Which one? Are we too just the wrong place? Now that's the end of the thing. We need to go over to the middle someplace. Let's go down now. Let's see, we just did that. Where are we here? Right here? Okay. What is that? Okay. And that one, and then I think the next one is where we are. Okay. See, that was this one right here? No. Okay, hold it, don't get too far. Is that where we're at? Uh, we've just did that, I think. There. Okay, we were there just moving to the next one, right? Okay, a few other factors and influences then that'll affect the body. And it looks like we're hung up. There we go, virus. Okay, so what does a virus do when it gets into the body? It penetrates the cell. When it penetrates the cell, it changes its resistance. So if you have a number of cells associated with a particular organ and they're infected by a virus, the resistance in that particular organ and tissue are going to be greater than it normally should be. Okay, bacteria, it surrounds the cell. Same thing, same scenario, except in this case, it's a difference of the way it attacks the body. But the cell now has been compromised and its resistance has increased, okay? Base salts, if you don't have salt in the body, you don't have conductivity. Most people think that if you have electricity and water, that it's conductive. And one of the things we do in one of the classes that we teach is we have a beaker full of water and we've taken a 110 volt wire and spread it apart and put one in each side or one in the, in the water on each side with a switch and then plugged it into 110 volts. Well, when you throw the switch, everybody is expecting it to blow up. We actually put a light bulb in the circuit so that you can see at 110 volts. When you throw the switch, nothing happens, and they're just astounded. So you take a little bit of salt and stop dropping it in the beaker, and suddenly the light starts to come on. And the more salt you put in, the brighter the light gets, because the more conductivity you're introducing into the circuit. So cell salts are an important thing in the body. So we're not gonna go through all of these. Uh, enzymes are the same thing. These all affect. <laughs> Stand up 
Yeah, I'll just go run it at the computer, I guess. What does it do, lock up on us or? Okay, yeah, next slide. So these are just a few of the things, but I hope you're starting to get the connection here of how this device monitors the human body. It's a whole different perspective than looking at it from the chemical aspect and saying, oh, we think you have a cold, and so we're gonna give you all of these cold medicines, when in fact what you have is an allergy to mold, which exhibits exactly the same symptoms. So the doctor says, well, you know, the 10 patients I just had in here had the flu, you've got the same symptoms, you have the flu. A new study that was done by the Congress of the United States is just dumbfounding. Do you know how long it takes a doctor to make a diagnosis of what your disease is? Do you like to guess? <laughs> 10 seconds is close. Less than 30 seconds, he has made up his mind, what's wrong with you? And it's based on the fact that everybody else has that same symptomology, therefore you have the same thing. The one thing that's nice about the Osira is we're not playing the numbers game. It is very you specific. It doesn't look at averages, it doesn't look at statistics, it looks at the energetics of your body. That's what it's looking at, and it's saying these are the areas that we need to address. Okay, tissues in the body have the capacitance as well. Healthy tissue will absorb energy. We absorb it from the sun, we absorb it from different frequencies that are coming in. When you sit down and listen to classical music, why has classical music lasted so many years? because it's soothing and the frequencies of it are beneficial to the human being. We have teenagers that tell me all the time, oh, I can listen to the heavy metal stuff, it doesn't bother me at all. When you read their nerve point and you let them listen to that heavy rock music, that nerve point goes off scale. That's why they have all of these problems when they have these big concerts is because everybody is hyped to the height of the nervous system and it does have an impact on them. Okay, so healthy tissue then can store energy. Frequencies. If the body tissue system is low in capacitance or low energy and it is presented with an alternative source that is of the proper frequency, it will absorb that energy. It says, boy, this is good for me, I like this, I'm gonna take this in, and it will. It'll store that energy, much like the capacitor that we talked about earlier. So now we have an abundance of electrons in this particular area. This will, of necessity, change the tissue's capacitive status and therefore the value of capacitance. The result is that now the RC circuit moves back to balance, if it was out of balance to begin with, and the OSIRA test indicates a balanced reading and the frequency used indicates a remedy because the frequencies are specific to different remedies. We know that particular remedies reside in a certain bandwidth. And we take that bandwidth and send it out to the body. And the body tells us which remedy it wants. We're not saying, oh, out of this group, this is the one I think you need. We're saying, body, out of this group, which one energetically resonates with you and returns you back to homeostasis. Your body is the dynamic in this instrument, okay? The recap then, uh, for instance, if the lungs, if they're healthy, we have this circuit over here that is oscillating at a specific frequency. That frequency is often re uh, referred to as a resonant frequency. So if you're in a healthy state and those tissues are working and everything is good, we have a resonant frequency coming from that organ system and we know what that is. And we look for that to see where your health is. Is that making sense? 
<clears throat> okay, we just want to indicate here that we're still working on formula. This neat formula here is impressive. It's impedance. So Z is equal to the square root of R squared, which is the resistance that we talked about in a circuit that's static, plus the quantity of X of C minus X of L squared. Now all that's important for you to understand here is that X of C, which is the major component in the body, that's the capacitive reactance component, is frequency specific. X of C is equal to one over two pi frequency times capacitance. So what's gonna happen if I change frequency? X of C is gonna change. In this case, if I increase frequency, X of C is gonna decrease and vice versa, because it's import in inverted, okay? But the, the main thing I want you to see here is that this again is a frequency and this resistance is frequency specific or responsive, okay? All right, so we've got all of this stuff going on in the body. How do we measure it? How do we get the information back out of the body that's going to be beneficial to us? Here we have a short circuit. You notice this guy's really short. Okay, there's no resistance in this wire. So if I connect this circuit up, everybody knows what's going to happen. I, the current, is going to be equal to E over R. Well, E is 1.2 volts and R is zero. So I'm going to get maximum current through here. All those electrons are going to try to move through that wire at one time because there's no resistance. So we've got a short circuit. If we've got any scout masters here and you want to do a good fireside and start a fire, drop a battery in a little bundle of uh, steel wool. You've got a fire just like that because it's got conductivity and the oil and the, uh, the uh, steel wool will burn. That's one of the reasons why we put the overcurrent protection and the thermal shutdown in the battery, okay? To prevent any short circuit damage. A useful circuit has to produce something that's meaningful for us. In this case, we've got a battery. We have R1, which is a resistor which we use for safety in case this resistor fails or this resistor fails, we still have one or the other as a backup. So we always try to make something here that's going to be safe. In this case, we've got a meter and running back to the battery. So what's gonna happen? Our electrons are gonna be controlled across here. We're gonna be able to read a current, how many electrons are going past a given point, and show that on the meter. So this is kinda neat. And again, we're using Ohm's law. What's important for you to know here is in this particular circuit, which we've equated to the body, you're only going to draw 10 microamps. That's about half of what you would get if you took a one volt battery and put it on your tongue, okay? So it's a very, very small current. It's not going to upset the body's uh, normal process. Anytime you get above 2.4 volts, then tissue starts to ionize in, the ionize in the body. Then you have a different problem. So our system runs off of one and a half volt or 1.2 volts. Okay. Bingo. This is how we take the measurement on the human body. We have an electrode here, an electrode here held in the hand. And the current of this particular function is just running through the body and we take a measurement. Now we do some other things here that are unique to our system. Most EAV systems have been designed to look at acupuncture points at the fingertips. What that tells you is if an energy meridian is in balance or out of balance. It doesn't tell you where the problem is. So a lot of those things are symptomatic, okay? If I have allergies, for instance, <clears throat> I probably have a lymphatic system that's elevated. I probably have respiration problems. Uh, I have drainage problems of several different sorts in other organ systems and et cetera. So I have to be smart enough as a physician to say, okay, all of these things indicate that this is the problem and I hope that is, so I'll give them this dose and if these symptoms go away, I know I made the right decision. 
with the Asira, Mark, who's been a practitioner for 20 years, said, you know what? What I want to know is where are you broken and how do I fix you? I don't care about the symptoms. So when he designed this software, we looked at it from the body systemically and said, okay, what can we do to stabilize the entire body? How do we do that? Can we do that? We found a way. It's taken us five years and about $800,000, but we found a way to do that so we can stabilize the body. And now what we do is this circuit here does one thing only. Nothing comes through these electrodes, no signals, no nothing. The only thing that comes through here is that small 10 microamp current. So this part of the system simply measures the physiological change in your body. That's all it does, okay? No magic here, very straightforward. This is the old method of uh, testing with acupuncture points. You had an acupuncture point, you had skin resistance, you had tissue uh, resistance and the capacity reactants, and you tested it here. And they would test a lung point and they'd say, okay, you're in balance or you're out of balance. Problem with that is that it's not true and you get some skewed readings. In fact, this is how the body is set up. You still have this acupuncture point that you can use, and you still have the skin resistance, and you still have the organ resistance, but you're also connected. It'd be nice if energy meridians were singular, like phone lines, and we run them from point A to point B, and we could tap into them. That's the thinking of everybody in the, in the world today, well, till about five or six years ago. Then they realized that these acupuncture points are continuous. They don't start or end in the body, which is what you would think they would be, because they're not isolated little circuits. So what we've done then is we send a signal from a separate generator to the body that stabilizes all of these circuits. Remember I said they're frequency specific? So if we send out a frequency, all of these things are going to assume a particular condition because of that frequency. So they're going to resonate at whatever that frequency is. Okay, that stabilizes the body in one condition so that we can look at it systemically as a network. Okay, so once we've sent that out, we have a stable system here. I could look at any of these points and I would get the same reading. Okay, so what we do next then is we send out to the body filters that we call filters. If I send out to your body a filter that has allergens in it and any of these systems react to that, it's going to change their resistance, and I'm going to read that on the point. Okay? That's how we tell what's going on in the body, because we've sent those frequencies that are allergens to your body. It responded to those. Then we pull up all of the remedies that deal with allergens, and we have signals for every single one of them. There's no voodoo here. And those signals are broadcast to the body. And when the body goes back to homeostasis, we know which remedy did that because the computer's running through them. And it indicates this is the remedy that will bring that organ system back to homeostasis. And I'm going to leave you here and let Mark do a bit of explanation on filters and how they operate. And then we'll do one test I'm sorry that we can't test everyone. We'll just take somebody randomly and run a test on them, and we'll show you how the system works and how it picks up their maladies, and hopefully we'll have somebody that doesn't have any blackmailable diseases come up <laughs> <laughs> that we can use. And in that setting, then, I think you'll start to get a feel for the power of this device. Again, the accuracy of this device is unsurpassed. We have about 400 of the new systems out in the marketplace, 
and every doctor is just absolutely amazed at the accuracy. Now the beauty of this system is again that it looks at the causal chain perspective and so it's not always what the doctor assumes until one antidote, and then I'll turn this over. We had a doctor come in from Florida, wanted to see the system, did not want to tell us what his symptoms were, wanted to see if this thing was valid. Mark tested him. The remedy that came up for this gentleman was a sleep deprivation remedy, and he just laughed. He said, you know, I sleep well. I don't have a problem with sleep. My problem is my digestion system. I am in constant pain all of the time. And Mark said, no, that's not the cause, that's the symptom. Now, take the sleep deprivation remedy for two weeks and then call me and let me know. Well, the guy called back in about 10 days and he said, you know, for the first time in 20 years, I'm waking up refreshed and my digestion problem has disappeared. Now, being a doctor, number one, he should have known that if you don't oxygenate when you're sleeping, where does that manifest? Right in the gut. You're going to have pain because you're not sleeping and you're not oxygenating correctly. Number two, he's laying awake all night, gnashing his teeth. All that saliva is going into his stomach. His stomach is producing acid. Bingo. Okay, but the sleep deprivation remedy cured his problem. Now, had you have checked that with any other system in the marketplace and looked at the acupuncture points and the hands, you would have found the intestines were probably inflamed. You would have found that the uh, respiration was probably out of balance. You would probably have found the nervous system out of balance and et cetera. And because this gentleman said, my problem is my stomach, they would have gone in and treated the large intestine and he would never have gotten well. And that's what's happening in the marketplace today is because the instruments that are out there are looking at the wrong thing. They need to be looking at the organ systems and their functionality. That's where the causal chain begins. That's where the issues resonate. And when we do that, we get clients well. Well, I'm gonna sit down here and let Mark uh, take over. So you don't need this, do you? No, I don't need the magic circuit. <laughs> you need this. Whoops. One, two, three. Is that good? What I'd like to do is uh, try to tie this all together clinically. Uh, just a little bit of my background. I was a medic in the military, uh, went into electrical engineering, came out of electrical engineering, worked for my father and his company and went, oh my gosh, I made the worst mistake of my life. I hate electrical engineering. It's all the same stuff. <laughs> so uh, I actually ended up uh, running the technology. I've ran the system from its archaic state uh, a couple decades ago for different medical doctors, chiropractors, acupuncturists, uh, and seen a lot of neat things. And as Joe mentioned, through the years, as a clinician, all I wanted to know with an individual, what's broke, what do I do to fix it, how fast can I find it, and what are my results? That's all I wanted to know. And that's what we designed this technology around, and they don't consider it diagnostic, and I'll give you an example. If you have a strep virus and it goes into your body, this system checks to see, does it need the signature to kill the strep? Does it need a signature to stimulate white blood cells? Does it need a signature to, to uh, uh, work with the T cells, the B cells, the lymph cells? The body will actually pick what it needs to antidote or correct the situation. Uh, the intelligence of the body, as I have noticed through the years, uh, whether you call it intelligence, life force, chi, uh, that energy field, uh, when it leaves the body and we pass away, the cellular components fairly quickly start to break apart. So if you reverse engineer, you could say, huh, that energy field has a greater effect on keeping this body in the form and shape it is in. And so with our technology, 
Uh, we designed it to tap into that field of energy. It stores all the information. I look at it as a software program running the hardware program. All we're doing with the technology is top, tapping into that software information. Um, in fact, uh, homeopathics, I'm sure you've heard of them, they work very similar to our frequencies. Uh, homeopathics, until uh, they developed quantum physics, defied the laws of physics. Because the more dilute it became, the more powerful it became. And they said, that's impossible. You do that 20, dilute it 24 times, Avogadro's theorem, there's not a molecule left, and yet it still works. And the reason was because the way they uh, succussed and diluted it, it left electromagnetic signatures or imprints into the alcohol and water. And those fingerprints of information are what the body used to heal itself. Uh, to give you some examples of the, the fun that we've had the technology before we uh, run it uh, uh, on a demo, I work with a lot of uh, uh, nurses and we came up uh, her body actually went through the equipment, picked a uh, nosode, which is a signature to stimulate her body to kill a specific parasite. I had no idea what it was. Looked in the medical dictionary, one place in the world you can get it from pigs in a Polynesian island. And I went, huh, just handed her to the book and I said, does this make any sense? She says, oh yeah, that's funny. I, I did missionary work on an island. We lived on a pig farm. <laughs> and I went, oh. So what did she do? She ran down and got a stool sample and guess what? She came back the next day and said, you're wrong. There's nothing in the stool sample. And I said, no, there's not a high enough quantity that they can detect it yet because their technology is different. I said, take this remedy. And we actually took the electromagnetic signature of that pathogen, transferred it to a liquid medium, had her take that. And it basically, in a sense, loaded her T cells up with the information to go kill that. And I said, take it for 10 days, then do a stool sample. So she did, and she came back and she said, oh, now they can see it. And I said, yeah, that's the difference. Uh, a lot of those tests, they have to see a certain quantity before they can say, oh, now you've got it. Ours just looks and says, does it exist, yes or no? If yes, what do we do about it? And that's the difference with the technology. And some of the tests, I wanted to bring you through uh, what I've designed here, or one of the tests that we've designed. And after listening to a, a number of doctors lecture throughout the years on different possibilities and potential for health problems, I said, why not just put them all on a list? Let the person's body run through the list, show me the information, and then I'll just review it with them when I'm done. So we can look at, uh, uh, we've got all the allergens, the uh, environmental, uh, environmental, We've got signatures of over 500 bacteria, the 12 tissue salts that move nutrients in and waste products out, chakras, uh, which are energy fields that can be monitored, uh, all families of the chemical toxins. We can look to see if chromosomes are weakened, circulation, as Joe mentioned, uh, colors. If they're not processing a color, it's like an allergy. It's a specific frequency and the body responds on that level. Uh, we can look at the teeth, uh, we can look at uh, different fungi, genomes, geopathic stress from the uh, uh, natural fields in the environment uh, to harmful energies from your microwave to your TV to uh, electromagnetic to the workplace. The one test, uh, uh, as Joe mentioned, with the uh, hormones, uh, they randomly drew uh, six, 600 patients from an 1800 patient base, uh, used 100 of those as control, and they did specific tests for bioidentical hormones. Uh, it was a 99.7% correlation, but what they didn't put in the study was really fun. All those people that showed up those problems, they imprinted the electromagnetic signature of the hormone into a liquid medium. Those people took that, and over half of them their entire blood chemistry shifted back to a healthy state without anything else but electromagnetic frequency. The ones that didn't shift, they gave a bioidentical hormone to finish it. Um, but we've done studies with uh, uh, Dr. Nancy Robert. She's uh, uh, with the Phoenix Mayo Clinic. And we did a study with her at uh, Dr. Norm Sheely because we were looking at technology out of Russia and they don't allow anything into the Mayo Clinic that's not FDA cleared. 
And I'm sure most of you are familiar with uh, uh, Curlian photography. Okay. Well, they got a device from Russia that was called GDV. They called it gas discharge visualization. It was really interesting. You could take a person and you could run their fingerprints across this and take pictures and it had a mathematical equation that looked at everything and it would tell you where the areas in uh, or problems were in your body. And we used our technology and we ran it head to head and they correlated almost 100%. What was really fun, though, was with our technology, we could come up with the remedies, let your body pick the remedies that it wanted to heal itself. We could transfer it to a liquid medium. We'd actually have these people take the drops, wait just a few minutes, and they'd go back and take the GDV test. It'd show perfect health or perfect readings. Now, that's interesting because the energetic fields will shift almost instantaneously, but it takes a matter of time for the chemistry and the physical being to follow and, and match that shift. In fact, in here, we use biological age filters to fool the body to say, yes, we're going to give you this signature, but how long is it realistically before the physical tissues catch up to this blueprint of information uh, that we've put together? And so some of the other tests, uh, we've got all the Borrelia bacteria, mental or emotional. Uh, we all have mental or emotional stress. But if it's strong enough to start to alter other systems in the body, then it'll show up on the test. And most of you are familiar with Edward Bach. Have many of you heard of Dr. Bach from England? Um, a physician, he happened to notice that uh, a lot of patients with certain mental problems went to specific flowers and stayed around those flowers. And so he found that if he took those flowers and homeopathically prepared them, and homeopathy, there's no big secret to it. Basically, homeopathy is really simple. Something in its chemical form causes XYZ symptoms. Well, if I just pull the electromagnetic fingerprint, that fingerprint of the substance cures XYZ symptoms. So if you think of mercury, if I ingest mercury, I'm going to have probably a lot of brain and nerve and, and kidney and liver issues. If I take the signature of mercury and put that into my body, whether I have mercury or not, it helps with the brain, the nervous system, the kidney, the liver, and those areas. Um, and that's part of why this technology isn't considered diagnostic. For instance, if a virus comes in, as Joe mentioned, if it mutates, its frequency shifts. Well, when it's looking through over 700 viruses, it says, this is the closest frequency to what I've got right now. I can use this to kill it. It doesn't mean they've got that specific virus. A, it means that the virus they've got could have mutated or B, they can have that specific virus, or C, they could have had that virus, the body has destroyed it, but it left an electromagnetic residue that needs to be cleared out. Um, for chiropractors, uh, we can actually look at, uh, uh, when we do seminars, we usually have some chiropractors. We can actually run down the vertebrae, tell you which vertebrae is out, uh, have a chiropractor uh, test and show you, yep, they're all painful. He can tell which vertebrae are out. We've got uh, miasms, which deal with inherited predispositions. Um, phenolics, um, as, uh, as I've worked in a clinic, I'll give you a story on phenolics. When I first started, we had the huge questionnaire. Now it pretty much comes down to what's your name, what's your address, list your main symptom, and I'll figure out the rest in the testing and tell you, mm -hmm. um, which is how we actually sell the technology in seminars. We tell people their problems. I don't want to know a thing about them. Uh, we were testing uh, a chiropractor that was deathly allergic to apples. Sliver an apple, anaphylactic shock, he's in the hospital, they're hitting him with adrenaline. We tested him on the equipment, didn't show a, apples as an issue. And he said, that's impossible. And I said, no, that's a trigger. We're looking for the cause. Why is that trigger allowed to exist in the first place? So we went through the test. His body uh, failed the test for uh, phenolics and... Uh, it opened it up, it loads all the phenolics up, and through a process of elimination, they're sent into his body, and his body literally picks the one that it wants to heal itself. Well, one that showed up was a phenolic called cinnamic acid, uh, which, if you read it, and we've got the description, says it's an all animal dander. And he goes, oh yeah, I'm allergic to horse dander. And he read through it, and it's in all evergreens. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I have migraines with Christmas trees, we can't have those either. And so he was telling me symptoms that he totally forgot about. And so we just took this signature, transferred it into a liquid medium, had him take it for the time and duration. A month later, 
He actually sent us a picture of him eating apples, uh, riding horses, um, so something that was supposedly incurable was gone in a month, and he's uh, actually got two systems running full time now. So that's some of the neat things we see. Um, we don't see miracle cases like that all the time. It's an average of two to 12 visits, but the body will pick what it needs in the order that it needs it, in the amount that it has the capacity to heal, and literally start back through the process. And so the testing, the testing's kind of the funnest. Um, you can see, oh, sorry about that, moving too fast. Um, you can see we can look at structural things, the muscles on T TMJ, see if you're absorbing uh, different trace minerals, male, female, virus. We can see if you've had a vaccination uh, that was a little too strong and left a harmful residue. Um, and there's actually been studies that we've done with different healthcare industries. Uh, some of them involve children with twenty and thirty thousand dollar price tags and trying to figure out what the what was gone going wrong and we found that it was an immunization that was a little too strong, uh, removed the toxic residue and all their symptoms disappeared. Uh, there's several cases we have. Uh, one was a really fun one. Uh, this was uh, Dr. Henry West. He's a chiropractor up in Idaho, actually teaches postgraduate work to MDs. And they had uh, three boys near him uh, that all within a day of each other started having grand mal seizures. Perfectly healthy boys, 18, 19 years old, totally healthy. Uh, they started experiencing up to 20 grand mal seizures a day. Um, sorry, I'm just, he's got, I got the whole thing on video. It just brings me to tears every time I remember that video. Uh, anyway, uh, they, nobody could figure out what was going on. They life flighted him here to the uh, primary children's hospital. Ran every known test, couldn't figure it out. Uh, took him to the University of Utah, ran every known test, couldn't figure it out. Uh, they basically said, pad their rooms. Ah, sorry. Bring them home, let them have a nice life. Well, they'd been working with uh, Henry, and they knew about this equipment, and they thought, well, uh, let's go see if there was a chance. So he ran them through this test, and it actually came up with a, uh, a detox for Paraquat. And Paraquat is used in, uh, well, by the government, for one, they spray it on marijuana to kill marijuana. Two, they use it up in Idaho to spray it on the potatoes to induce a fall harvest so they can uh, harvest all the potatoes at the same time. So they'd had this film on these boys for almost a month before they went to see Henry West. He discovered that it was paraquat poisoning. So he's, he's, he's a sharp doctor. He said, well, let's run blood chemistry. They ran blood chemistry and said, yeah, it shows paraquat. And after he started talking to the boys, what had happened is all of them had been swimming in the Snake River. Uh, the government actually did spray up and down that day for uh, marijuana plants, and all of them had open wounds uh, into the bloodstream. So the paraquat went right into the bloodstream, right into the nerves, and attacked their nerves in that manner. Uh, so he actually had the homeopathic antidote of paraquat, uh, gave it to them, and all of them within three weeks were back to full health. And we've got cases like this. This was kind of w one that was really fun because it's been on film from the beginning to ending. Uh, they went back and talked with some of the previous doctors, and a lot of those people don't understand the technology and said, nope, it was spontaneous remission. You had nothing to do with it. That's impossible. And, and that's why, if you notice, uh, Joe explains things, everything very scientifically, even though, he's saying 10 minutes, even though, thank you, even though what we're really reaching into in this field, we're, we're, we're going into quantum physics, which is the nature of how everything's working inside the body, even the electronics on the upper levels is in quantum physics. Now to correlate quantum physics to blood chemistry is near impossible. And that's why some of these studies, they have to be designed pretty unique. But what I'd like to do is, uh, is it all right if I run you through a test? Yeah. All right. What I'd like to do is, uh, we'll just pretend. Uh, you got all 40,000 volts hooked up? Oh, you know it. <laughs> oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just. Uh, Wrong uh, pull you up. Uh, okay, you're an 11 year old male today. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm trying to show you is age, gender. Uh, what's nice about the technology they've done in a number of studies? Age makes no difference. Gender makes no difference. Race makes no difference. Height, weight makes no difference. 
It just sees you as an individual and that information is directly correlated with the technology back and forth. In other words, it sends information to you. An example, if, if I test for heavy metals, as Joe mentioned, uh, where we get the circuit and we stabilize it, if I test for metals, I can send the frequencies of metals through your body. If there's no metals, they just pass through and the circuitry just stays the same. However, if there's a metal, whether it's in my brain, whether it's in my kidney, or even my toe, it doesn't matter. If I send those frequencies through, it would hit that metal, cause a disresonance, the pattern shifts. And if that pattern shifts one way or the other, we can say it's weakened or it's stressed, or if I'm an MD, I can say that's inflammation, that's degeneration. So we can say, oh, you had an inflammatory response to metals, and then we'd pull up all the signatures of metals, let his body go through them and said, here's the one I need to antidote. And because the antidote will then bring that circuitry back to homeostasis, whereas the test knocks it out of stasis, when it's knocked out, we say, what do you need to come back? And so that's what's nice about this. I, I tell people the power of the technology is your body picks what it wants to heal itself. Your body's doing all the work. I'm just reverse engineering, asking you the questions at the end of the test with what came up. And so if we run a test, for instance, uh, there's, there's multiple ones we can do, but we'll just do a few here. We can look, uh, this comprehensive test looks at over uh, 7,000 items. We can look at the nutrients. We can look at inherited predispositions. Uh, this will be fun. We can actually look at the uh, uh, neurotransmitters and the vertebrae, for instance. And what we're going to have you do is these are the electrodes uh, that we're talking about. We'll just go ahead and have you come on up here. And we'll have you hold this in one hand. And we'll have you hold this in the other. And then we're just going to start the test. And it calibrates uh, to uh, each individual. And then this goes through and sends different signals through. And you can see there's a little bit with the uh, adrenals, the connective tissues, the maxillary sinus, the peripheral nerves. And now we're looking at the vertebrae and we're letting his body show us uh, which vertebrae uh, would need an adjustment or each vertebrae is associated with an organ. It could be the organ that went out as well. So we look at all things together. Now we're looking at an inherited weakness. Uh, serinum deals with skin conditions, airborne allergens. Um, and we'll ask him a few of these questions a little bit later. Now we're going through the test. They're all pass-fail. If he fails them, the remedies are loaded up in those red squares you see. They're sent into the body, and his body picks which one it wants to uh, uh, antidote itself. And so you can see uh, that the body, if you sequence the timing, can respond to about 3,000 signatures a second. And that whole test right there probably went through about 8,000 items. And I'll go ahead and take this from you, then I'll go over this a little bit with you. And uh, so what's fun about this Yeah, the causal chain, uh, that's a good question. Joe says, what, what comes up here? They come up, uh, the red and the yellow are directly related to the causal chain. You can see these colors here. The white ones here are uh, secondary. They're still an issue, but they're secondary. So for instance, he's got an issue, this is kind of unique, with a third chromosome. Be like, well, what? I'd be like, exactly. <laughs> He'd, he'd go, what? You've got to understand, my background is you know, electrical engineering. I got into this, and I'd actually look up chromosome 3 and see what symptoms can occur if that's not functioning properly. What this chromosome, the remedy is, is an optimal blueprint of a third chromosome. So if there's any weaknesses in his third chromosome, this says, here's what you should look like, here's the information, now start to adapt those chromosomes to this pattern and fix yourself. That's the power of this technology. These remedies, if you notice, we would put in a liquid medium. He would take 11 drops three times a day for four weeks. What's important about this is these are designed to do something very specific. Move him from point A to point B. Once he's at point B, they're no longer of any value to his body. So done. What do we need next? And his body will pick the next group and step him back to health. And the body will usually pick a lot of these energetic signatures and 
nutrition to move it along. As it gets healthier, it'll move away from the energetic signatures and move more to the nutrients to maintain the health. It's kind of interesting how the technology works. Uh, he's got an issue with the musculoskeletal system and this remedy, Cinchona, for instance. It deals with uh, debility, exhaustion, numbness, rheumatic complaints. Now here's what's fun. He's kind of looking at me going, eh, maybe, maybe not. What we find clinically is about a 70% correlation because this is in a sense an early detection system, they may not quite be aware of those symptoms yet, but clinically we'll see 70% spot on. Uh, to give you another example is men with prost prostate symptoms. We work with it at the clinic all the time. All the symptoms of prostatitis, we give them a PSA, guess what? The PSA isn't high enough that we can say you have prostatitis, but they've got all the symptoms. We run them through the test, their body picks what it wants, we give them the remedy, wow, all their symptoms went away. We redid the PSA, it came down. Did we ever cure prostatitis? No, because you could never medically diagnose it. It wasn't progressed, the, the body wasn't screwed up enough that the chemistry had shifted far enough that they could diagnose it yet. So it's, it's designed to pick things up. Um, here's one, uh, a detox for food additives. You can see a couple of neurotransmitters slightly off. Uh, here's a homeopathic of magnesia sulfurica, I'd grab a uh, Materia Medica, which just lists homeopathics in alphabetical order and read the symptoms that it's designed to cure. And as I'm interviewing him, I'd write all these symptoms down and I'd just gather basically his symptom chart from the information. So when he comes back in four weeks, I should be able to ask him on all those symptoms and the majority of them should all be gone. And the reason we do that is because the healing is often so natural and, and it's such a, the body paces it out that they'll get better and they won't even know. Uh, a lot of people have come back for a second visit and I'll go, so, how's that cough? I haven't had a cough. Oh, okay, that one's gone. So, uh, how's, yeah, and you get the idea. Because the body as it heals, um, here's some fun ones here. Uh, creosote, most of you may, may or may not be familiar with creosote. Uh, but it gets into the respiratory system. This is a detox for creosote that starts to basically damage the respiratory uh, and the bronchioles. Um, and so you can see what it's designed to do. Uh, creosote, uh, for instance, is such a, a good chemical at what they do, they put it on our telephone poles uh, to preserve them. Uh, and so there's different environmental pollutions that show up that his body wants to flush out. Uh, in this state, uh, the, the chemicals that show up are different than in uh, um, other states. And this one here is really fun. Uh, miasms. Uh, you can see, we'll just read this one because I know we've got to finish up here. Uh, th they actually reflect genetic weaknesses or predispositions. Uh, this one gives you predispositions for allergies, hay fever, di uh, diabetes, de debility independent of any organic disease. These are often the chronic fatigue patients we see. Medically, they've ran every known test and says there is nothing there. Um, this one is very interesting. We've tried to put it into... Uh, to tell you how powerful this technology is, we've tried to put this into a paragraph description. This one remedy here actually has a 360 page volume on medically what it alone has cured. And so sometimes that's what I tell patients, I can't see the direct correlations because I just don't have all the data in my head. Uh, there's been times when I've tested medical doctors, uh, one of them had chronic hives for seven years, uh, two to four outbreaks every day. Every remedy that came up made absolutely zero clinical sense to he or myself. We're like, hey, what the heck, let's imprint him, see what happens. He's like, sure. And in 30 days, it cleared up all of his symptoms. And, and that's the power of it. It ignores uh, every symptom related to the causal issue. If you pull the causal issue out, every symptom related poof, disappears because it all existed because of that one causal issue. And that's what we look for with this system is say, what are the causes of the problems? If we remove those, every symptom associated will, will disappear. And so uh, we'll have some, some brochures. There's different uh, practitioners around the country if you're interested in this. Uh, uh, chiropractors, medical doctors, osteopaths, naturopaths. Um, it's a class three medical device registered with the FDA. Um, so. Uh, it's in professional hands, but uh, we'll have some information and brochures for you. 
And so I just kind of wanted to give you a feel for the technologies that are out there. And uh, I guess we're down to a minute or two. Were there any questions before, uh, before we finish up? Ah, he said we've got FDA approval. Well, well listen, let's uh, re-ask that question. <laughs> you said you had FDA approval, and how do you deal with medical legal issues uh, when you're using these people are using the machine? Exactly. He's. We do have the FDA approval. Let me pull up one of the sheets here. How we go uh, about that? is when we look at the body, we couch it in purely energetic form. In other words, this will show me the test they failed in the remedy. This will say energetically it's weakened. And we've got a disclaimer that basically says, we believe that these fields of energy, if we shipped them back to an optimum value, the tissues will respond, but we can't make any claims of diagnosis because we are looking at the energetic fields. Uh, so far in this field, the only one that's ever been in trouble is clinicians making claims, sure I can cure cancer, sure I can do this, sure I can do that, uh, which came down to an individual. Uh, so far there's three lawsuits been brought against our technology through the years. Uh, one was a medical doctor here in Provo that did allergy testing. Uh, the AMA sued him. He actually took him to court, won a small, wrote a small book about it and won and proved that this was at least as effective or more effective uh, than the IgE blood testing or the RAS testing. Uh, there was a doctor, Katrina Tang, a medical doctor in oriental medicine in uh, Las, Las Vegas? Reno. Reno, Reno Nevada, uh, that actually used it for cancer patients uh, with quite good success. Uh, she fought for 10 years, the AMA and the FDA both lost. Uh, there was another case of a doctor in Washington that said this technology is valued for almost all known diseases because this is how it works. Uh, and he won his case. So, so far, everybody that's been taken to court uh, has won. Uh, the, the problem in the past was the radical claims that everybody were saying. I mean, even at our clinics, have we had patients that have been medically diagnosed of cancer get better? Yes. Have we had some of those patients die? Yes. Did we heal them? Absolutely not. The technology gave their body the best chance that it had to heal itself. And so that's how, if that, does that answer that good enough for you? Yeah, I, I would think if you went to court, it would have, you'd want a jury trial. Yeah, exactly, you'd want a, you would, you would want a jury trial. Are you, I'm <coughs> sorry, are you using the fast Fourier transform analysis with this device? FFT? Uh, right now, just this device is all that I'm using. I know there's so many other modalities that are of value out there, uh, but I'm kind of just, I've been focused on this one to see, you know, what can we actually really do? What can't we not accomplish with it? And so, uh, you know, there's detox devices we have, other modalities. Some cases in the clinic, I'll mix them, but we're doing research, of course, we've got to keep only this technology. Otherwise, it's too hard to track what did what. How does your instrument compare to QXI or MORA? Oh, good question. Uh, QXI or MORA. There's a couple of things, as Joe mentioned. When we output these signals of these signatures into the body, we could actually take an oscilloscope, hook up to our output, and on an oscilloscope, you can see the fingerprint of every single item we have in there. Uh, QXZI does not use those fingerprints. Uh, they use, they go a little bit deeper into quantum physics, which is, uh, I understand what they're doing, and it does work, and I'll explain why. What they do is they've got something that mimics ours, but it doesn't output the signatures into the body. Uh, there is, they feel that the word on a screen has an effect on a human being, which to a point it does. But they also believe there are no, uh, and, I, and I agree with them, there are no coincidences in the cosmos. If this person showed up at this time and I pushed the button and it randomly popped everything up, if I believed in it, it would work. 
And so what happens is those technology, uh, uh, a number of them, are based on if the practitioner really has a strong belief system in them on that quantum physics level, they'll work. If they don't, it doesn't. And this one, whether they believe in it or don't believe in it, makes absolutely no difference. Whether they're the practitioner or the client, it makes no difference. Um, where the other ones, and I've run them, my friends, we've got some out of England that they thoroughly believe in. They can run them on me and they are spot on. If I try to run them on somebody because I don't believe in it as strongly, it doesn't work. And so that's, that's some of the differences. Uh, like I said, the big difference is scientifically we can validate everything we're doing so that everybody's happy. Uh, question, yeah. yes. Yes, I have two questions. First of all, do you know if, a, if the Advanced Health Clinic up in Farmington, Utah has this technology? The Advanced Health Clinic, Clinic in, Farmington, in Farmington, Utah. Farmington, Utah, yeah. Uh, they may. I know there's, there's a couple of, the of uh, doctors doctor. near there yeah. that are uh -huh. okay, they're using so. the technology. And some of them are from the original finger uh, testing technology, because uh -huh. uh, this one we've only come out with uh, last October. Oh, OK. So but if you give us a call later, I'll, I'll give you a brochure. We can find oh, okay. out for you. And then also, uh, Thomas Vallone told me uh, about a year ago that the, that the body actually has a very high voltage across the c cells. And I would assume that it has very low amperage. But, uh, but, but there's actually a high voltage across the human body. Do you have any comment on that? Yeah, there's, uh, the skin itself has about, just the skin has 2 million ohms resistance. The acupuncture site's about 100,000. And there's different values of resistance throughout the whole body. I was thinking of voltage, but <laughs> yeah, and the voltage as well. But with this system, we're not looking at the voltage; we're looking at the capacity of reactants. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so it's different than the voltage. We're looking at a different value. Okay. Okay, I think we got time for one more here. All righty, last one. And then Constantine Miles' uh, video would be up. Uh, for the different remedies, uh, do you uh, have to put the electrodes in different places on the body, or is it always just hand to hand? And and secondly, <clears throat> name at least one thing that it's not good for. Oh, you bet! I can name a bunch that it's not good for. <laughs> Shot, burnt, stab, finger cut off. Go see a surgeon. That's trauma medicine. This won't do it. Um, uh, as far as the electrodes, the reason you can hold them, uh, before we had to go get the information from different points all over the body. Um, and in doing that, uh, there's a number of studies where they've actually, uh, the energy meridians, they've injected with radioactive isotopes and tracked them through the body and said, hey, guess what? They go through the organs and systems that people have been talking about for thousands of years. Not only that, how fast it moves directly correlates to the condition of the organ. As Joe mentioned, if they move fast, inflammation. If they move at a certain pace, health. If they move at a slow pace, degeneration. But what happened is the radioactive isotope went into the next system, into the next system, and it was one continuous loop. And that's where I got the idea of saying what it appears to be is the body stores information in different sections of the body. If we can figure out the frequency to send to it to say share your information, we've then created an entire network from the energetic to the etheric to the, the chemical to the organ to the uh, how organs work together in a system to the entire being. We're looking at everything from a micro to a macro scale instantaneously, which is clinically what, what I felt we needed. So I hope that uh, uh, helps you out and thank you very much. Uh, Joe, uh, Mark, thank you very, very much. Uh, what a team.